Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus today. I am Trace, and this is episode two of three in our series about algae. Yep, we're talking about algae. That stuff that grows in your pool if you put in the wrong chemicals. Looking at you, Rio. Yesterday we talked about what algae is, and maybe it's one of the reasons that there is life on Earth as we know it. We're also gonna tell you if this single-celled organism can kill you, and yeah, actually it can. And we're gonna talk about how algae may be one of the dominant forms of life on this planet and could be changing other lives as we speak. All sorts of other stuff as well. Make sure you subscribe so you get all of the episodes and watch episode one if you haven't yet. But today we're gonna talk about how, again, algae will kill you. It is the worst. Or as our friends Nature Hates You would say, algae hates you. Not to get too doom and gloom here, but let's talk a bit about algal blooms. I always thought it was algal blooms, but algal makes more sense. Algal blooms is when microalgae goes a little wild and it overpopulates an ecosystem, usually a pond or a pool, doesn't have to be. They can get really, really bad and it can mess up all sorts of things in that ecosystem. So what causes these algal blooms is called nutrient pollution, which it seems kind of like an oxymoron, right? You'd think nutrients, they're good, right? Nutrient pollution is when there are too many nutrients. Anyway, we'll get there, hang on. So you got this nice little aquatic ecosystem, right? And in there is some nitrogen and some phosphorus and of course, some algae. The algae provides food and it provides a habitat for fish, shellfish, smaller organisms, all living in this little aquatic ecosystem. But if too much nitrogen and phosphorus gets into that ecosystem, the whole thing gets thrown out of whack. Too much makes the algae grow faster because there's more nutrients. So it consumes those nutrients and it consumes them so quickly that the ecosystem becomes overwhelmed and cannot handle it. That is a bloom. Sidebar, all of the kid movies that showed you that if you remove this bad thing from the environment, it will go back to a balance, this is one of the examples of how that's not really true. Nature is not built on balance. It doesn't naturally go to a balance. It naturally does what any organism does. If there are nutrients, it will try and consume those nutrients. In this case, of course, the bad thing being inserted in to the environment is caused by humans, but we're gonna come back to that and sidebar. This happens usually because of what we do, and it's something that we've known about for a long, long time. Agricultural manure and runoff, nitrogenous fertilizers and water runoff from farms are some of the largest sources of nitrogen and phosphorus into these ecosystems. Also, another problem is our wastewater. Our poop water sometimes gets into an ecosystem and that also has nitrogen and phosphorus in it. And when it gets into the waterways, algae eat that up. Burning fossil fuels can cause problems in ecosystems like this, as if you needed another reason to dislike fossil fuels, but burning them puts more nitrogen into the air, which is soaked up by the water causing algal blooms. And all of those you may have known about, but there are other things that can cause algal blooms as well, again, related to stupid humans. For example, overfishing. In 2009, Professor Britis Clemens Erickson noticed a correlation between predatory fish populations and algal blooms. It was actually a decline in some populations had an incline in algal blooms. He put together a team in the Netherlands and they reviewed a year's worth of field data on predatory pike and perch populations in nine areas of the Baltic Sea coastline and found where perch and pike populations were normal, surrounding waters had a 10% chance of experiencing an algal bloom. That's not too bad, 10%. But in areas where the populations of those fish had been substantially reduced due to overfishing, chances of a bloom were 50%. So essentially, because those fish weren't there, algae grew. And why should you worry about that? Like, what is the problem other than it eats up more nitrogen? Because algal blooms are terrible. They affect lots of things. And according to the Environmental Protection Agency, algal blooms produce dangerous toxins in fresh or marine water that can sicken or kill animals and people. They can create dead zones in the water they can raise treatment costs for drinking water for us. It can also hurt industries that depend on clean water. So let me explain how algal blooms does this. Let's start with coral, one of climate change's favorite victims. Large algal species, or macroalgae, or macroalgae, 
are big enough to essentially smother coral to death. Assistant Professor of Microbiology at OSU, Rebecca Vega Thurber, had this to say about algal blooms, quote, there is evidence that coral reefs around the world are becoming more and more dominated by algae. Some reefs are literally covered up in green slime. That's a bloom killing a coral reef. When there is this much algae dominating the coral, the coral aren't able to grow. The level of helpful bacteria which feed the coral and produce natural antibiotics for them dwindles, and in essence, this causes coral bleaching, which is the whitening of coral. When that happens, the fish that live there and the animals that provide all of this other ecosystem that then build onto more and more of complex ocean ecosystems die off or have to leave. And that massive change can completely alter ocean ecosystems. And it starts with a bloom, sometimes. When the water becomes too warm in an area that has coral, it expels algae called zooxanthellae or zooxanthellae from their tissues. It turns them completely white and then they die. That's called coral bleaching. But this doesn't just happen when the water has a slightly warmer temperature. It can also happen when nitrogen gets into the water because a biochemical change takes place in the cell membrane of the zooxanthellae and the coral bleaching then will happen at a lower temperature. 93% of the Great Barrier Reef in Australia has been affected by coral bleaching, which is super sad because it completely altered the whole ecosystem of the region. The best long-term solution to algal overgrowth, or algal overgrowth, is to reduce pollution and overfishing so the ecosystem's natural balance can be restored. But again, nature doesn't naturally balance on its own. It may never return to what it used to be. In the end, the fish also get the short end of the stick on this because when concentrations of nitrogen and phosphorus go up, algae goes crazy just consuming everything that it can. That's why they call it a bloom, because it just goes everywhere. And when algae gets too crazy, the other plants and animals in that ecosystem get overwhelmed and die. The dead organic matter from those plants creates more bacteria to decompose those, and an increase in bacteria uses up the dissolved oxygen in the water, because there are more little animals and more little bacterias in there. The fish need that dissolved oxygen to survive, so without it, they will also die. It's a chain reaction. And this is what's called a dead zone. On top of that, some microalgae can produce toxins which damage fish gills, killing even more fish. And when humans eat the fish affected by these toxins, it can become a serious health threat. For example, there's something called amnesiac shellfish poisoning. It's a gastrointestinal disorder that causes neurological problems and memory loss. There's Shiguatera fish poisoning, which can cause heart problems. There's diuretic shellfish poisoning, which I think you probably know from the name about what it does. It causes diarrhea and also nausea and abdominal cramps, and it can be fatal. You can have terminal pooping from this. There's neurotoxic shellfish poisoning or toxic aerosols. Essentially, the ocean waves break, throwing particulates into the air that you breathe in that causes asthma-like symptoms. There's paralytic shellfish poisoning, which is life-threatening and has no cure at all. 2,000 cases of that are reported each year. All of that can come from an algal bloom that causes this bacterial problem, a dead zone, fish that eat all of these things. It's terrible. And if that doesn't turn you off to algae and algal blooms, let me throw this at you. Algae may have caused the third largest mass extinction in Earth's history, or at least been a major contributor. The Ordovician Silurian extinction 443 million years ago wiped out 85% of sea life. At the time, most life was sea life, so that's a lot. Many experts blame an ice age as well. Glaciers could have spread, sea levels could have dropped, uh, which changed the chemistry of the ocean. But before the extinction, the atmosphere was carbon dioxide heavy, and something caused the CO2 levels on the planet to drop precipitously and the temperatures with it. Many scientists believe that land plants messed with a normal process of breaking down rocks, releasing a lot of phosphorus. When the phosphorus level in the ocean increased, the algae level did too, creating those dead zones because the water was losing oxygen. It was crazy. And it might not have just been this mass extinction where it happened. Isn't that insane? With all that algae growing, it could have changed the content of the atmosphere of our entire planet. Holy crap. Huge extinction event. Algae hates you. We talked a lot of crap about algae throughout this episode, though, because, you know, I don't want to personify it too much. It's a single or multi-celled organism that, you know, has a lot of different awesome uses. So 
actually 1% or less of algal blooms produce toxins. It's not every time. Some algal blooms can be helpful. Blooms can help us gauge environmental damage, not only on the water, but also on land. And it can tell us when, say, a farmer is being negligent and letting nitrogen seep into a local ecosystem, or an industry is doing something wrong. Algae is there kind of saying, hey, hey, something's going on here. So we can use these things beneficially as well. Sometimes algae can be good, and we're gonna talk more about that tomorrow. So make sure that you tune in then as well so you can subscribe here on YouTube so you get that episode. Thanks so much for tuning into DNews Plus today. How do you feel about algae? Are you worried about it killing you? Have you ever had any problems with algae in your life? Let us know in the comments. And thanks so much for watching DNews Plus.